there is nothing on the face of this planet that will grow a human being more or faster than building a business. I was, I was told by my good friend, Brian, who's a longtime entrepreneur, early, early on in my entrepreneurial journey, I was, I was told those words, uh, yeah, and we're talking 2017-ish, 2016, 2017-ish. And I'm, I look back and there's, I mean, he's absolutely right. It's spot on. There's nothing that will grow you and evolve you and challenge you more than building a business. It tests every every part of you. It tests your 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 mental makeup. It, it tests your emotional makeup. It tests your your courage. It tests your commitment. It tests your persistence and your resilience. It tests you to continue to increase and upgrade your talent level and your ability to deliver what you what you promise. It it, it tests it tests your ability to to learn new, uh, I don't know, new levels of wisdom and new levels of information like finances and accounting. And it, it just tests every single aspect of, of being a human being. And it's, it's fascinating. It's sometimes overwhelming, but you know, it, it, there's a lot of fulfillment, a lot of joy in that process. And, and it's been fun for, for any of you who have have embarked on the entrepreneurial journey and are on the entrepreneurial journey. Kudos to you. You know, we're, we're a, a rare breed and a rare bunch to those of you that, that haven't embarked on the entrepreneurial journey. Maybe you find it hard to believe that, that building a business will grow you more than anything else. But if you ever do throw your hat in the ring and literally get in the arena, you will see how true this statement really is. Now there's been one thing, in my business, in this entrepreneurial journey, there's one thing that has tested me more than everything else. That's learning how to sell sales and, and listen, in, in, in building a business, if, if <laughs> you, you eat what you kill, right? So if you're not selling, you're, you're not eating. And, and sales is the, is the, the skill that's required the most in order to to build a business. But listen, I, I grew up, I grew up in a home, you know, when there were door to door salesmen, they were always slimy and always scammy. And they were always trying to steal your money. And, you know, telemarketers were just grimy and grungy. And, and, you know, salespeople were always just trying to take your money, they really had not no value to add. And, and not that, you know, not that any of this was true. These were these were the stories that that were told. These were the beliefs that were held in my house. And you know, you, you grew up almost not fearing salespeople, but casting shade on salespeople for you know not for for just trying to provide for their family, but but trying to take away from yours. And it it's this aspect. It's these beliefs that challenged my ability to sell early, early in my, my career, early in my coaching business. Now, when I was in fortune 500 America, I was, I was an executive level level leader. And I, I had salespeople that worked for me and with me, but at the same time, I wasn't a, a salesperson. I could negotiate contracts and I, I could negotiate deals, but I wasn't a salesperson, if that makes sense. So I never really grew the sales muscle in in my my corporate career, but when when I was when I became a solopreneur, that muscle had to build and it had to build quickly and it had to build rapidly. And those beliefs that I held about about the sliminess and the thievery involved in sales really really debilitated me. They really they really uh they really challenged my ability to to ask for uh reciprocation for the services I provide. And as I as I grew in my ability to sell, my business grew. And and a cut there's there's been a couple things that that have helped me more than more than others in in the ability to sell and the ability to to offer my services and the offer of the ability to negotiate higher higher agreements and higher rates. A couple of things I want to dive into into a couple a couple of the concepts today. Number one is sales is not slimy. Like <laughs> sales, good salesmanship is service. It's a service. It's a 
it's a support mechanism to the world. Listen, nothing, nothing gets, nothing gets exchanged in this world without a sale. Nothing very, uh, let me say very little gets, gets exchanged. If you look at, you know, goods and services, if you look at things, there's always, there's a transaction typically. And that's a, that's a, that's a sales transaction. Like salesmanship, salesmanship is, is an avenue and it's, it, it unlocks, it unlocks having a person who has a need or a problem in their life or has a, a desire. A sale is what, what helps fulfill that desire or solve that problem or to unlock, you know, that, that, I don't know, that satisfaction that they were looking for salesmanship good healthy salesmanship is when you find someone that needs something that you offer or has a problem that you're you're able to solve you're willing to solve and you you're good at solving it's it's finding a person who has a need and it's fulfilling that need solving that problem providing that service providing that support providing that good when when there's a slimy salesman it's a salesman who creates a problem in a prospect creates a problem in a client creates a, a problem and then is is the one who wants to solve the problem that they've just created maybe maybe a, a certain a, a certain salesman will will kind of cast light on a problem that doesn't exist and create the problem in the prospect's mind and then provide the solution to the problem that literally the prospect didn't have a second ago and now they now they have this problem and if you look if you look at some of the marketing that happens in the world like quality marketers or good good marketers they create problems that don't exist they 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 show you a celebrity that holds up a product and now it creates a sense of inadequacy inside of you that the product promises to fulfill that i would say that has a, an attribute of of being slimy where the marketer is literally creating a problem with inside of you but a healthy approach to marketing a healthy approach to sales is when is when the, the company or the person or the salesperson is looking out into the world for a problem that already exists, for a need that already exists, and then like offers support, offers solution, offers the the to fill the need that that's already present in in that person, in that in that company, in that in that situation, in that relationship. When when you when you match a problem and a solution in a healthy way that both people get what they're looking for or both companies get what they're looking for, that is a very, very healthy sales approach. That is a very healthy transaction. Find a problem, fix a problem. Find a problem, pick, fix a problem. And that's all business really is. All business is is identifying problems that exist that you can solve offering the solution and in return creating value in in that transaction that's reciprocated back to you that's very basic basic salesmanship and and a healthy salesperson <laughs> a good powerful confident talented salesperson will never be without a job will never be without income and that it's a it's a, a skill that's always in high demand. When when you develop, when I as I developed a healthier relationship with sales, my my ability to sell improved. When I realized that I had the solution to other people's problems, then and and I could offer that. And I started matching my solution with their problem and shamelessly offering support. My business started growing. Salesmanship is not slimy. Creating a problem 
for other people that they don't have and then trying to solve it, offering to solve it for in exchange for a financial transaction. That's slimy as fuck. Now, listen, that's number one. It's just a, your relationship with sales and selling. Number two is uh, I didn't believe in my solution. So it wasn't just the, the, the first in the first scenario in the first concept. It, it's really just a fact, the belief that sales was slimy. Number two, it's I, when I didn't believe in what I offered, when I didn't understand the power of it, when I didn't understand the value, when I didn't understand the, the solution set that I could bring to the table, when I didn't understand that and I didn't fully embrace it, it was hard for me to sell because it just felt like, like I was one of those slimy people because it was like almost if there was uncertainty that they were going to have their problem solved. I really didn't want to, I didn't want to sell. I didn't want to offer. But over time, as I tested the value, as I saw the value, as I saw people's bank accounts increase and their, their impact increase, and I saw the quality of their happiness and the quality of their relationships, as I saw the, them get healthier, it, it became easier and easier to offer my services because I started believing in what I offered and the value that I possessed and the talent that I had in, locked in this, this mind and body. When when you don't believe in what you offer, it's going to be really, really difficult to sell. It, for people, and, and there was a, a radical shift in, there were decades where I didn't show up in integrity, and I was out for myself, and out for my own well-being, and, and, and I was willing to do things and, and be be things and be people that I was never intended to be. So I could have like, so I could build my, my net worth wealth. And that was all through, you know, fortune 500 and, and my executive level experience. When I was out of integrity for all those times, for all those years. And in 2016, when I made a key decision to get completely back into integrity with who I am, who I was meant to be and what I was intended to do in this world, when I decided to, to get back into integrity with that, I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to unlock from that integrity. So when I didn't believe in what I offered, it was very, very challenging for me to offer it because I didn't want to be slimy and I didn't want to feel like I was out of integrity. I have a, I have a client, longtime mastermind student and a, and a private client. And after we had worked together for a year, he said this, these magical words. He said, this last year working with Mike has been the happiest year of my life. And, and listen, here's what I know. That's, it's not just the happiness element that I bring to the world, but I watch people's bank accounts increase like dramatically. And I watch, I watch the impact that they have and their significance increase in the world and the, their ability to influence and impact in a positive way the, the entire world. And I see people's marriages get better. I see people's lives get better. I see people's health improve. I see them like shrink and I see like, and all of this, all of this comes from helping them understand what they really want in this world and that any dispel any doubts or fear that they can't have it and truly step into the, the powerful being and the divine being that they were always intended to be and that they always were. They just didn't, they've refused to embrace and they've refused to see. I help people like accept themselves and love themselves at such a deep level that they stop any abuse of themselves and they stop allowing other people to, 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 to abuse them. And, and they, you know, if, if, if you ever, if you listen to some of these podcast episodes, a, a person who absolutely loves themselves will never allow themselves to be broke. Like it's, it's people that struggle with money that they hate themselves. They, they, they struggle to, they struggle to embrace themselves. And, and that's why, that's why they're, they struggle with money. But a person who absolutely loves themselves and respects themselves will never allow themselves to, to struggle with money. And it's, it's those things that self-acceptance, that the self-worth, 
the self self esteem. It's the acknowledgement that you are significant and you are valuable and you are worthy and you are deserving of whatever you want. And when you see that in this in this lifetime, when you see that you can be, do, and have whatever you want, your your level and and you start to do that. You start to choose and create and choose and create. Your level of self respect and self esteem just skyrockets. And as I've seen and as I've witnessed the power of the impact that I have in the world, it becomes a lot easier to sell. <laughs> it becomes a whole lot easier to sell. So number one was, was really about like the relationship with sales, that sales itself is slimy. Number two is, is just that I didn't believe what I, what I offered. And as I saw what I offered and as I saw the value of it, my ability to offer it went, went through the roof. But there's this third, and and I see I see this a lot in in new salespeople, people wanting to build a business, but but being scared to ask for value. And this third is relationship with money. This third is the third is when someone feels that money is life, that money is well being, that. If they ask for money, they are literally robbing from people, from their, their life and their quality of life. When someone holds, especially if you have someone who's, who's trying to be or looking to, to create some sales in their life, if they're struggling financially, they're going to project that financial struggle onto their prospect. So you're going to be afraid if you're going to look in your bank account and say, well, I wouldn't spend this for this service, so I, I can't expect them to spend it. So when, when, you, when you have an unhealthy relationship with money and you bring an unhealthy relationship with money into a sales role, into a sales position, into a sales approach, there's going to be some struggle because you're going to feel like, like you're taking someone's well-being away from them. You're taking someone's quality of life. You're taking someone's life away from them. At the same time, if you have this desperate need for money in a sales conversation or in a sales approach, they're going to smell your commission breath from a million miles away. When, when you're on a sales call, when you're in a sales conversation, you are there for a very specific reason, to understand the problem that or the need that the person that you're sitting across from or that you're talking to the, the problem or the need that they have, and you are just trying to identify if you can help them solve their problem or fulfill that need. You are not, when, when you engage in a healthy sales conversation, in a negotiation, in, in a tap dance, in a prospect call, you're, you are there just to inquire about the need or or that problem that the person has that they're trying to have corrected or fixed or repaired or, or fulfilled. You are, you are not there to take their money. You are not there to have your financial needs met. You are not there to just satisfy your bank account. You are there to see if they have a problem that you can solve. And when you come at sales, from a find a problem, fix a problem perspective. And you show up realizing that selling is serving when, when you're trying to find out if someone has a problem that you can solve. Selling is serving. When, when, you, when you have a healthy respect for the value that you bring forth in that, in that relationship, in this transaction, the solution that you have you actually respect and you actually appreciate and you actually believe in. You believe in your solution. And when you bring a healthy relationship with money on a sales call, sales becomes very, very easy. And, and when you do these three, 
And when you bring a powerful solution on a sales call, but you also bring your confidence in yourself and what you, what you offer, and you keep your financial needs, your financial well-being, your financial desperation, your financial desire, when you keep it out of the phone call and keep it in the back seat instead of the driver's seat, and you, you, you put your commission breath away and you brush your teeth and you, 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 you take some mouthwash and you get your commission breath out of the way. When, when you bring those three, healthy relationship with sales, a belief in your product, and keeping your, your financial needs out of the picture, out of the conversation, and you just show up to try to solve a problem that someone has for a value transaction, for a valuable transaction, exchange of value both ways. But, but the, the prize isn't the exchange of, of value. The prize is the exchange of the solution. And when you show up with that mindset, with that perspective, you're, you're not going to lose at sales because there's 8 billion people on this planet. And, and everybody has something in their life that they would pay a problem that they would pay to have solved. And the real servants on this planet are people that believe and have a solution to people's problem and are just looking for people to help on a daily basis. This was the, this was the most difficult skill and the, the most difficult mindset, the most difficult uh, challenge that I had to overcome, that I got to overcome in this entrepreneurial journey. And, and as I move through these and I get healthier in all three of these, these approaches, when I have a workshop, it becomes much easier to offer my solution. When I have an intensive, it becomes a whole lot easier to, to offer my solution. When I'm on a sales call, it becomes more and more effortless to find a problem, offer a solution, and have the conversation about the exchange of value. Sales makes this world go around because it's problem solving at its finest.